Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim from Pitsco Education. Today's RoboBench, I want to talk to you about the Tetrix Mechanum Wheels. We're actually going to talk about what a Mechanum Wheel is, how it differs from an Omni Wheel, the design features specific to this Mechanum Wheel. I'm going to actually talk about how they work on your robot. I'm going to show you how to mount them on your robot. We're going to demo them on the robot and then we're actually going to put it on the table and actually show you how it works on the surface that you need it to. So uh, last but not least, we're going to talk about all the resources that are available to help you be able to implement these on your types of robots. So if that sounds like a good plan to you, let's go ahead and get right in the middle of it. Okay, let's start by talking about what exactly a mechanum wheel is. And some people say mechanum, but I'm going to say mechanum because that's where I come from and that's a little bit easier for me. But a mechanum wheel is a specialty type of wheel used to make a special type of a drive, a holonomic type of drive. Now, a holonomic drive basically means that my robot can move in any direction without changing its orientation. I can go forward, I can go backwards, I can go side to side, diagonally, and never have to turn my robot. Traditionally, in a normal drive, if I want to go in this direction, I have to turn my robot to actually go in that direction. That's not necessary in a holonomic drive, which makes it such a useful type of drive, especially in kind of close quarters. So that's why people want to use these type of wheels. Now, there's traditionally two different types of mechanum wheels, or uh, wheels specifically used for holonomic drives, and that's a mechanum wheel, uh, like I've been saying, and then also an omni type of wheel. But they're different, and they have some common features, but they also have some unique features. So let's try and explain what those are. Let's start with the rollers. Now, you can see that they both have rollers around the perimeter of the wheel, and what that allows the wheel to do is the fact that I can actually, as I rotate the wheel in a traditional sense, I can rotate this way. Because of the rollers, I can also go side to side. So that's what gives its maneuverability. But again, they're different in the fact that the, an Omni wheel has those um, rollers mounted perpendicular to the wheel. On the Canon wheel, the rollers are mounted at a 45 degree angle to the, the plane of the normal wheel. Now, what that does is require you to actually have two different mechanum wheels. You have a left and a right. So I'm going to try to explain exactly how that you would determine the difference between the two. Now, I have two wheels in front of me. I have them actually pointed in the same orientation as far as the hubs. I'm looking from behind. And as I look at those wheels and I put, move until the roller is in the uh, top center position, one of the high sides of the roller is pointed to the right on this one over here and on this wheel the roller is pointed to the left so that's what denotes a right or a left hand wheel that's kind of confusing so what we've done is to make that a little bit easier we've labeled them i have a b wheel which would be my right hand wheel and then i also have an a wheel if i can find my mark right here that denotes the left hand wheel. So we have a left and a right. Now, what that does is that means to be able to successfully create that holonomic drive I'm talking about, I have to use these wheels because there's two different types. I have to use them in pairs and they have to be mounted specific in the right orientation and I'll cover that a little bit later. But that's exactly kind of a brief description of what a mechanic wheel and how it's used in a holonomic type of drive. So let's talk about the specifics of the design features of this particular wheel. So let's start with the uh, anodized blue aluminum plate, high strength aluminum. Obviously it's important for uh, durability and, and use in uh, either competition or the classroom. It does have a uh, rubber surface roller over a Delrin core. So that's important as well. This is not a slick uh, roller. It is a rubber neoprene roller. So that's important uh, to know. It does have a machined hub with a double set screw. I'm going to hopefully hold that so that you can see that. But again, a double set screw to make sure that you can securely uh, fasten it to either a six millimeter output shaft on the motor or a six millimeter actual steel axle. So um, it's, that's an important feature to, to actually recognize that it has. The other thing to think about is this does come fully assembled, just as you see it. You'll open it out of the package, it'll be just like, that, like this. You do not have to assemble it. 
You do not have to buy an extra hub uh, to actually uh, um, use this wheel. It comes fully assembled, including the hub. It's important to know a lot of mechanic wheels, you actually have to buy an extra hub. It does use nylock nuts. So in other words, when it comes assembled, it's gonna stay assembled. Um, again, an important feature to make sure that this is a durable type of wheel in whatever use that you use it for. The other thing we talked a little bit about left and right and how that can get confusing, it is clearly labeled on all of the uh, aluminum plates. Either it's stamped so you don't have to actually look and figure out is that a, uh, an A or a left hand side or a B or right hand side. It's labeled so that it's easily identified as one or the other. That's important. And last but not least, it was specifically designed for the Tetrix system. So that means that it matches the spacing and all of your other Tetrix pieces. I can mount this on my Tetrix robot. If I need to put it in between two channels, the spacing is going to be correct so that I don't have to allow for an odd size, specifically designed as part of the system. Sounds like a small thing, but really at the end of the day, that becomes incredibly important when you try and put everything together to make a, a robot. So those are some of the unique features that make this Mechanum wheel a good fit for your particular Tetrix robots. So let's go ahead and mount these up and see this thing work. Um, one of the things that I do do just to make my life a little bit easier, make sure that I'm putting them in the right configurations, I will go ahead and lay my wheels out in advance. So I, ha I know I have two different types. I have an A and a B. I will actually, again, hold one of them up to make sure I have my rollers correctly, and I'll put them then in the opposite configuration. So I have my A's. I'm going to put them on my diagonal on this direction, my B's here. So now all I need is my 332 Allen key, and I can actually mount those up just like a normal wheel. Again, the key is to make sure that my set screws are on the flat or of the D-shaped axle. Um, and then it's just a matter of going around the corners here and mounting each one up. If you have any doubt whether or not that uh, set screw is on the flat, it does not hurt to go ahead and back that off just to confirm. And you can see that, again, the advantage of having those rollers and not having any special engineering, this part of the process goes pretty quickly. So I have my wheels mounted. Uh, and again, if you looked at this from the, the top of my um, overhead shot, you'd see and draw a line between diagonal, uh, between the uh, wheels, you would see that those rollers align with that diagonal line, creating that X pattern that I talked about. So, got them mounted. Let's go ahead and turn this puppy on and see them work. Okay. Now I have everything mounted up. I have it powered on. I have my tele up. I've got my program started. If you have any questions about that process, I would encourage you to look uh, on the other RoboBench library and find videos specific to that. But I've got everything ready to go here. So basically, again, what we talked about, I'm going to just review. We talked about a force vector being perpendicular to these rollers and the fact that if I know that and I combine them and I rotate these wheels uh, in the proper direction, they'll cancel each other out and create the behavior that I want. So let me just start by show, trying to demo that. I'm going to do this slow. Um, now if I move, I have the, all of my wheels on my left hand drive so that if I move them slowly forward, I'm getting rotation on all of my wheels in this direction which again with those force vectors is going to cancel out if I'm on a smooth flat surface and again that is key. These do not work very well on a loose or um, gravelly type of uneven surface. You want that friction to be consistent on all of my wheels at the same time. Which is a troubleshooting tip that as you're mounting these if you if you have a direct drive and you've got those motors with the um, the offset shaft, you want to make sure that those are in the same position so all four wheels contact the surface evenly. You don't want any kind of a um, one wheel being higher than the other for this to actually work the way you want it. But again, if I rotate my wheels in this direction, force vectors are going to cancel out. My robot's going to go in this direction. If I rotate both all of my wheels in the opposite direction, again, I know what those force vectors are going to be. It's going to cause my robot to move backwards. If I rotate them so that they are going in opposite directions, front and back, force vector is going to cause that to go in this direction or just like that. 
again, the opposite direction is going to cause that vector to actually cause my robot to go in this direction. If I want to go to a diagonal, again, I can operate just two at once, and again, then, because of, uh, I have my vector backwards, it's going to cause my robot to go in this direction. The opposite way is going to cause my robot to go in the opposite direction. So again, we understand what those vectors are. We actually can predict what the behavior will be. I did all this on a stand so that you can actually see those wheels without watching trying to track my robot around. But now it's time to go ahead and put it on the table and actually see this work in actual real life. Okay, so I've got uh, my robot. I'm going to go ahead and take this off the stand, put this to the side out of the way here. I'm going to set this in the middle of my table, and hopefully I'm going to be able to drive and actually demonstrate what we've got going on. So again, um, the idea is that with these is I actually create my vectors where I can actually make that robot move in any direction that I want, side to side. I can make it go forward. I can make it go backwards. I can make it go to a diagonal uh, as I uh, use those wheels in um, the different configurations. Or I can actually combine them to create, again, that behavior that allows that robot to move in any direction without actually rotating. Now, I can still rotate. I can go ahead and cause my robot to rotate in the uh, direction that we need it to, just like we normally would but that's not necessary in actual motion. So that's the advantage of uh, this type of a wheel on a robot that allows it to be very maneuverable in very tight places. So that's why and how these wheels would actually benefit you prep perhaps in either a classroom competition type of situation where you have them on a, um, a unique Tetrix type of robot. So last but not least, let's go ahead and let's talk about resources because again, one of the things that we, we, we do go uh, hopefully an extra mile for is to provide some resources so that you don't have to figure all this out by yourself. Uh, we do have on the product page for Mechanic Wheels, uh, we have a resource file that is available that actually gives you a diagram and shows you that X pattern, shows you how to mount this as you need to on your robot, actually gives you CAD files for the wheels if you need to put them on an electronic build of your robot. And then also we will have a demo program that either for a robot like this that is four-wheel drive with the prism and, or uh, and teleop or just a prism and the motor controller so that you can program them by yourself. So those are all pieces that we've created for you as resources so that you can actually see as well as these videos on the product page, see exactly what you need to be able to use these on your robot. So like we always say, have fun, build some robots, come back and see us.